I'm definitely gonna piss off a lot of these TikTok creators that we're watching today because I don't agree with a lot of them. <laughs> Hi, beautiful. Let's be honest. When it comes to social media, it's a great place to spread misinformation as well as actual useful information. But can you really tell the difference between the two? Sometimes we can't. When it comes to beauty advice on TikTok, specifically hair advice, I often scroll past the video wondering if that was a myth or if it was actually true. So today, I'll be using my 10 plus years of hairdressing experience, plus a lot of, lot of research that went into this video, to share with you which of these TikTok hair videos are actually true and which ones are false as shit. And boy, do I have some very interesting videos to share with you today. Let's play a game, shall we? Besties, don't come for me, but this is why you need to stop air drying. Especially if you are under the impression that it is less damaging than blow drying, because research shows that air drying can actually be more damaging than blow drying. So, you may have thought for a second that was going to be true. It's false. Mm. And it's false from my research and opinions, okay? So let's just also put that in the video where this is from my research and my opinions. There is a lot of gray area when it comes to a lot of these things. And I get exactly what Mains by Mel is saying. And some of the video is true. But the fact that air drying can be more damaging than blow drying, I'm just not buying it. This was one specific thing today that I researched a lot. It doesn't seem like there was any like actual studies done about this, but the only reason why air drying could possibly be more damaging is that when you have very heavy hair that retains a lot of moisture, it can swell the cortex and hold a lot of water in your hair and your hair can be pulled on a lot by that water weighing down your hair, which can result in breakage. But that just seems so unlikely. Nobody's walking around with their hair dripping all day, every single day. People are towel drying their hair. You're just never gonna have as much water as you need to actually cause damage to your hair unless you're walking around with dripping wet hair the entire day. I I am just gonna say this one is false. Using heat on your hair is more damaging. It's just, come on. Reasons why you should use a wet brush to brush your hair, especially if it's wet. The teeth of your wet brush are far more flexible than a normal paddle brush, providing your hair with a little bit of give as you rip through all those knots on your head. It will make the experience a little less painful, reduce the amount of breakage. Our hair is stretched out when it's wet and shrinks when it dries. So when you are brushing wet hair, you want to make sure you are extra gentle on it, which means that you you need to use tools that will be extra gentle on it. This is true. I think a lot of people know this, but not everybody. I still see so many girls out there using a hard paddle brush to brush their hair when it's wet. Your hair is at a fragile state when it's wet, and when it dries, it's at a much less fragile state. So using something with bristles that are super bendable and malleable is going to very much benefit your hair when it's wet. Brushes that have very bendable bristles are not going to tug too hard on your knots, and they will kind of slip by the more like aggressive knots in your hair. That way you're not pulling on those when it's wet. You guys, you really don't want to do that. If you have a really hard time brushing your hair when it's wet, let it dry a little bit, maybe like 30% dry, and then go in with your wet brush and then try to untangle some of those bigger knots. And that's because when your hair is dry, it's much stronger. So it can handle a little bit more aggressive brushing. But be careful with those damn very hard bristle brushes. Don't use them if your hair is wet. This is so true. I'm gonna tell you exactly why you shouldn't be using silicone. You'll find silicones in almost every conditioner and it's like a plastic coating on the hair. It builds up and builds up over years and years of use and most shampoos will not remove it. I refer to it almost like a raincoat for the hair, blocking any moisture from getting in. And this sounds great because it'll help protect against frizz, but eventually it stops the hair from getting any hydration at all. I'm saying this one is false. Mm. This just makes silicones sound horrible. And while I understand what she's saying, totally don't think she's like trying to say something that isn't true. She said silicone creates a plastic coating on your hair. It just sounds so intense. It's just not that crazy. Like putting plastic over your hair, like I think my hair is gonna be like crunchy and like gross. It just doesn't happen like that. What silicone does do is put a coating on the hair, but it's a very flexible, very, very thin coating to your hair. And it does a lot of good. It keeps moisture in, it keeps frizz down, it adds shine to your hair. Silicones are incredible in hair care products and make your hair feel and 
look amazing. If you are really worried about silicone buildup, use a detoxifying or clarifying shampoo. I have a great one, it's called Project X Detox Shampoo. Um, use one of those. You can do a clarifying treatment. Malibu has great ones that I love. And also just use less silicones. If you're like packing the silicones on and every single thing you use and you're using like five different products at once that all have silicones and you are then applying more silicone oil like on top of your hair like five times a week, sure, maybe just calm it down a little bit, but I'm quite sure you'll be fine. And that this is just a little bit of a, um, a myth. The most damaging hairstyle. It is true. I mean, this is very subjective. Is it the most damaging? I think it's the most general damaging hairstyle. There's a lot of hairstyles that could be more damaging. You know, if you put some cornrows on me, my hair will probably fall out in two seconds rather than like a ponytail, which might be a little bit better for me. For the whole world, I would say uh, ponytails are one of the most common hairstyles and they can be super damaging. If you're constantly putting your hair up in a ponytail, you are going to see breakage on your hairline. You are going to see breakage in the back of your hair. You are going to see breakage up here. And if you're putting your hair up when it's wet, you're gonna see your hair stretching and becoming more and more brittle and damaged, and it's not gonna be great. I wouldn't recommend wearing it every single day, but you know, it's a cute look. So I'm not saying don't ever wear one again. I'm just saying be careful. And when you do those snatch fuck ponytails, be extra careful. Cause you might take that ponytail down and you might be left with a short ass piece of hair sticking up out of your head. I've seen it. I've seen people go bald here. You don't want that, do ya? <sighs> you guys like my hat? I'm giving a look today. Brad is giving a look. Yes. So whoever didn't know this might be shocked. Like not that it's like the craziest thing ever, but you might have been brushing your hair wrong this entire time with your brush. And um, to be honest with you, me too. This is another one that I had to do research for. And at first I was like, Meow, this kind of seems dumb. And then after that, I was like, Meow, it still seems kind of dumb. And now I'm thinking it still seems kind of dumb, but it also makes sense. And that's where we're at. So I'm gonna say it's true. Uh, because from my research, because I was over here typing away, doing research on this damn computer all day, burning my eyes off for y'all. From what I saw, it was like most flat brushes, detangling brushes, things like that are meant to be held vertically and you brush down like this, not horizontally. It still feels weird. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, I also don't know if it make really that big of a difference. Let's try it out, hold on. Miss Manny Quinn, how are you girl? How was the closet? Did you say hi to your other sisters in there? Don't worry, I give her food and the occasional sunlight and I, she has friends in the closet, okay? Let's tangle her up. I would say she's now tangled. Let's brush horizontally. Okay, now vertically. I don't know, I thought I got to the bottom of this one, but I really don't know. I think it's a little bit bs -y. It's a little bit maybe true. Maybe you guys can let me know for this one. Go grab a brush, try this out, and let me know down below if you think it's true or false. I really can't decide. Number one hair growth tip, stop getting hair trims. Instead, snip off only the split end yourself. Trimming your hair every three months does not make it grow faster. It only makes hairdressers richer. <laughs> yes, Isaiah says false. I don't think any hairstylist is like, you gotta come in every three months because I want to be rich. I mean, maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But I could say I don't think I've ever done that before. You could have the smallest little bit of split ends on your hair and you're not gonna get them all by just doing this. So I don't think you need to get a, a trim every single three months, unless your hair is just naturally very brittle and fine and difficult. Like this girl, she could probably get a haircut once a year or twice a year and be fine. But if you do have more brittle hair, then maybe yeah, every three months would be good for you. But I don't think we're trying to like get rich off of giving more haircuts. It's not that much money. <laughs> I will also say that a lot of people are very genetically blessed with incredible hair, this girl being one of them. I'm not saying she didn't work for her beautiful hair, I'm sure she did. To grow your hair that long, you need to have great genetics when it comes to hair. A lot of people, no matter what they do, their hair will not grow to that length, I can promise you. Like, I've seen people with incredibly healthy hair and it doesn't go past here. Like, that's just how it is. Uh, 
Ah, uh, yes. I'm gonna say this one is true. I've definitely done this on a lot of clients in my years and um, people love it. Dry shampoo has absorbent factors in it, right? It also usually adds some powder into your hair, which adds to the thickness of your hair. So putting this in after it blow dry, it can make your look last longer and keep it more full and keep the oils down all at the same time. It's all around like a decent idea. So right when I get in the shower, I put conditioner on my scalp and I bring it down through the ends and I let that sit as a hair mask and it also detangles my hair because shampooing always dries it out and tangles it and that conditioner is also loosening up any oil or dirt to make it easier to wash then we shampoo as normal you know really get in there second time we condition we only put it through the ends and we let that sit for a little bit and then we rinse the hair out with warm water then at the very end of the shower we rinse the hair through with cool water and that helps with shine yes True, 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 she's true, she's true. Is the entire thing that she said like super true? No, but there are things that I liked. And also, why is your hair so pretty? Give me that hair, I'm about to scalp you. If I scalp you, don't use this video against me. But um, I want that hair on my head. So this is actually a thing that a lot of people do. And also there's actual products for this. They're called co-washes. They're like conditioner shampoos. So they have a little bit of detergent in them and they have a little of those conditioning factors in them. And it's all mixed together. So it sort of detangles your hair as well as washing it at the same time. When you have super fine and thick hair, like what she has, it can often get really tangled easily. And sometimes a great thing to do when showering, if your hair gets really tangled, is putting conditioner in your end specifically before shampooing. That way you get all those knots out and then you're only going like this on the scalp and you're not roughing up those ends again and you're not retangling those ends. So everything is gonna be really smooth and soft once it is all cleaned and then you're gonna condition again. It's a great idea. The only thing I don't like that she said is that she puts the conditioner on to her scalp in order to loosen up the dirt on her scalp. I've never heard of conditioner loosening up dirt. I get the idea, but I just don't think that's actually totally true. You know, I did a lot of like thinking about this before the video and I just like don't understand how a conditioner would loosen up dirt and how much dirt you got on your scalp. It's not like we have like hard mud on our scalp. It's just like a little bit of oil and some hair products. You guys know already this is false um i've said this a lot but coconut oil for some reason people think if they put it on their hair before they lighten their hair it's going to do anything which it's not coconut oil just fills the hair with hydration temporarily and then when you rinse it out it comes out your hair probably looks and feels amazing when it's in your hair but it is going to come out of your hair and lightener is made to eat through everything it's meant to go in there and just take out all that pigment and kind of the structure of your hair a little bit. Coconut oil is not gonna lose that battle with the lightener every time. But luckily there's things like bomb builders that can actually help. When you are going through hair loss, it is recommended that you wash every single day or every other third day, no more than once every three days. Dehydrotestosterone grows with sebum. So the more oily your scalp is, the more that DHT has the environment that it needs to live in. We're going with a treatment. Is he true? I think she said DHT feeds off sebum, so keep the sebum down on your scalp. I like the idea of washing every other day or every three days, mostly. I still am not totally convinced that every day is great. She kind of said like every day or every three days or every two days is fine, which I agree with. When it comes to hair loss, you do want to keep that oil and that dirt and that grime and all of that uh, stuff kind of off of your scalp as much as possible because what can happen if your hair fibers are super weak and super fragile sometimes the hair fibers can actually have a hard time poking out of their holes because of all that dirt and oil buildup and we don't want that if you are thinning or balding you're gonna want to prevent that as much as possible by washing a good amount with some good shampoo and conditioner and not with a bunch of detergents that is just gonna strip your hair and leave your scalp dry and crusty. We don't want no dry crusties in here. Okay, this one is false. 
and it's not entirely false, but it is majority false. Saying that you're going to reverse heat damage is a strong thing to say. Saying that you are going to repair heat damage is another thing. Repairing is possible. Reversing like it never happened is not exactly possible as of right now in the world. Some of the products she named, especially the bond building products, are going to help repair heat damaged hair, but things like oils are not going to reverse heat damage. Oils are amazing and they can make your hair look incredible and they can really soften up your hair depending on which ones you use. They have just great benefits overall. I love a good hair oil, but it is not going to reverse damage. It is not going into the hair fiber and restructuring anything inside. So therefore it's not reversing anything. So I sort of agree, sort of disagree, but mainly disagree. I hope that made sense. Well, I'm glad we got to the bottom of all that. I actually found a lot of those things really interesting and um, I'm glad I got to do like more research about certain things I've been seeing online because I was actually curious myself if some of these things were true or not. And uh, we got to the bottom of it. Call me Investigator Brad, because I'll be doing research. <laughs> If I was able to teach you anything today, give it a like. Come on, do it. Today's Instagram shout out goes to Trudy and she says she is post chemotherapy. Congratulations. And she wants to know if this blonde wig suits her. Could there be anything that suits you more? Like, whoa, you didn't need to pop off that hard. You look incredible. Absolutely. Yes, this is your look. Well guys, if you would like to check me out anywhere else, here are my social media handles. If you would like to shop any of my hair care or my hair color products, they are linked down below or at xmonohair.com. You can get the iconic wave tech wave foam, all the iconic hair healing colors, or you can get super gloss and make your hair super shiny and healthy. Oh, it's amazing. Check out more videos over here and over here. Yes, do it. You can binge watch. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed and you can have a beautiful day because you are beautiful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to live your extra life and I'll see you next time. Bye.